I'm going to be talking to Mark Pattenden, uh, Shell Senior VP for Chemicals and Products in Canada, about a new project that the company is proposing for its Scott Refinery and Chemicals plant in Alberta. And it's a very, very significant carbon capture and storage, which of course is getting a lot of attention these days for as we ramp up climate policy and attempts to decarbonize, uh, difficult to decarbonize uh, uh, industries like oil and gas and chemicals. So welcome to the interview, Mark. Yeah, thank you, Markham, and great to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Well, thank you for uh, for uh, agreeing to the interview. Uh, maybe we could start with an overview of the Polaris Carbon Capture and Storage Project, please. Yeah, sure. Um, so, so first of all, maybe just uh, high level. This, of course, connects into uh, Strategy Day at Royal Dutch Shell level. We we uh, talked about our new strategy in February 2021. Our new strategy is powering progress, and one of the key pillars of that was, of course, achieving a net carbon footprint of zero by 2050. And so uh, this project at Scottford, of course, is very much uh, in line with that uh, ambition. Um, I think the other part about it uh, in previous to Strategy Day, but then reinforced at Strategy Day was um, Ben Van Burden, who's the CEO of Royal Dutch Shell, talking about Scottford being designated as one of five energy and chemical parks and to actually achieve the transformation of these existing refining and chemical assets into energy and chemical parks uh, by 2030 or earlier. So um, very much uh, CCS is a, is, a, is a pillar of that uh, as we seek to decarbonize um, uh, the energy system, um, both of the, the emissions at site, but also um, the emissions uh, that our customers ultimately also produce when they use our products. So Polaris CCS, is um, uh, building on the success of Quest. Of course, Quest has been in operation for six years. Quest captures around a million tons of uh, CO2 per annum from the upgraders, uh, which is part of the Albion Oil Sands uh, joint venture. Uh, Shell is the operator of the upgraders, but we have a 10% uh, shareholding of the entire entity. Um, Quest has been in operation six years. Uh, we've just gone through its first major turnaround. So think about like your car, when it's 100,000 or 200,000 kilometers, it's going through a, some sort of major overhaul. That's effectively what we've done with uh, Quest. Um, fantastic condition of the unit, and it's been successfully started up. Over the last six years as well, we've seen that um, that unit has, uh, on average, been 30% lower in terms of unit cost, OPEX. So building on all that success and the learnings from Quest, um, we, we're, we're pleased to talk about and announce the Polaris project. And the Polaris project is focused on decarbonization of our refinery and our chemicals uh, CO2 emissions. So uh, Polaris is slightly smaller in its initial phase uh, compared to Quest at 750,000 um, tons per annum, notionally. And we will decarbonize um, the refinery uh, emissions by around 40% and the chemicals emissions by around 30%. Now, I, 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 it's interesting you brought up the issue of cost with Quest uh, and that the costs have fallen. And there's a big debate going on whether carbon capture and storage is in fact economic. Uh, and what's, so what's your experience with Quest? Is it economic to, to operate uh, without subsidy or, uh, and will Polaris uh, be economic? So, so Quest, um, of course, has been supported by the Alberta government, both in terms of the funding of the CapEx, where the government, the federal government, as well as the provincial government also made contributions. That's all publicly available information. And of course, the operating costs out till uh, the end of 2022 are also uh, covered by the, uh, the province as well. Um, now, for Polaris, um, slightly different uh, case. Um, we're confident that with Polaris, we have a robust project in terms of both the development as well as the operating costs. In the context of um, legislation, which is just about to be gazetted, which is, of course, the low carbon fuel standards in Canada, as well as, of course, uh, the CO2 tax. So we believe we have um, a project that will stand on its own merits in terms of being um, profitable and competitive, um, not only in terms of um, from a shell perspective, but also I think in terms of the offerings of low carbon fuels that we were able to then subsequently offer to our customers. 
Now there, there's a, a potential for a second phase of Polaris and you're talking about creating a CO2 storage hub in Alberta. Can you explain the second phase please? Yeah, sure. And, and, and as part of Polaris, we're building out some of the infrastructure to already be able to accommodate uh, future phases of Polaris. And of course, that's where you see the headline of uh, 10 million tons of uh, CO2 sequestration relative to the 0.75 million tons uh, for the first uh, phase. Um, so notionally 300 million tons of CO2 over the project life. Um, we see this in sort of two pieces. One, of course, is deeper decarbonization of uh, Scottford um, with um, potential production of blue hydrogen um, and also uh, decarbonization of um, future biofuels um, streams that we may process at Scottford, which is another one of the energy and chemical parks uh, pillars that you see behind me on the picture, actually, in my background. Um, and so that, that's one aspect. The second aspect is uh, taking uh, this concept of a CO2 hub and basically taking other uh, industry industrial emission CO2 uh, across the greater Edmonton area and maybe even slightly further afield, uh, piping those CO2 emissions to Polaris and then sequestering those uh, CO2 um, vol volumes into the uh, reservoir as well. So that's the intention. And you can imagine there's a whole range of different industries that could be um, suitable for these type of, um, this type of opportunity. And, and I think the other part about it is as a hub operator, this is very much in line with the government of Alberta's vision of uh, CO2 hubs uh, decarbonizing um, the energy system across Alberta. Um, and this, this is going to be, of course, a material one. And I'm sure there will be others as well. Um, can you give us an idea of the capital uh, cost of these projects, Mark, and you know what Shell will be investing uh, in Alberta to make these work? Yeah, so Markham, I'm sorry, I can't give you exact numbers, but what I would, and it's our policy as Shell not, not to do that um, until we're much further sort of in the maturation of these projects. And even then, sometimes we choose still not to disclose them. Um, but I think important to recognise this is a very significant investment in Scotland and a very significant commitment uh, by Shell to, um, to Shell Scotland, but also to uh, Alberta and to Canada. What about employment now? I see that there's going to be uh, 2,000 jobs created by the first phase of Polaris. Are those construction jobs, operations jobs, and how, ma how many jobs might be created in the second phase? Yeah, so those 2,000 jobs represent a sort of a similar kind of footprint as we saw at Quest, and we believe that will be the case here as well. Um, operationally, I, I would say the biggest impact is going to be in terms of um, products and services from across Alberta, uh, in terms of the operation and maintenance of the, uh, the uh, new units, um, but less so, let's call, call it in terms of um, growing the Scottford organization per se, because obviously there will be synergies we'll be able to use um, between the existing uh, carbon capture units and um, what these new ones will bring. Now, the subsequent phases, uh, Markham, it's, it's difficult to, to sort of give a number um, of what that might mean, because of course, um, if we decide to build out uh, further um, decarbonization or low carbon opportunities at Scottford, that could be actually new projects, which could be very material, even relative to uh, Polaris phase one, when you start to talk about production of blue hydrogen at uh, scale, as opposed to just repurposing some of the blue hydrogen from Polaris at phase one and starting to build that market. So as the customer demand grows, um, there's going to be an opportunity to build out the blue hydrogen production, potentially green hydrogen at Scottford as well, um, but it's going to be driven by customer de demand. And of course, those new blue hydrogen production facilities will be pretty significant um, in terms of uh, the infrastructure you need to be able to do that. In terms of what it might mean for decarbonization when we are a CO2 hub operator, that's going to come down to what does it take at each of the individual sort of industrial entities, our partners, potentially people who could co-locate at Scottford as well in the future. We have a lot of land infrastructure, utilities. Um, we've got, uh, of course, uh, good rail in and out of uh, the site as well. Um, so uh, it's difficult to judge 
how many jobs would be created uh, during construction operation phases from uh, those types of opportunities. But, you know, there's going to be, again, fairly significant investments, I'm sure. Uh, Stephen, uh, sorry, Mark, uh, thank you very much for this. Really appreciate that and uh, good luck with the project. Thank you, Markham, and we look forward to sharing further details with you as the uh, months and years progress.